Good morning. I'm going to talk for a second before I go. It's been a tough couple days, just sad. Um, a lot's happened. I'm going to talk about work for a minute. You know, <laughs> it's a funny thing where people are having a really difficult time, not just speaking honestly, but creating accountability. And it shows up a lot at work, especially in young managers who don't have a lot of experience and the funny thing and this can happen anywhere in business is if you come in and start saying there's a problem or pointing at a problem you become the problem and that's fascinating because you're just simply pointing at something that existed before you showed up and i made the mistake of doing that at this job because the situation is rather severe and the leadership said they wanted to address these issues. But that's really never the case, right? Because the leadership created the issues. And there's this interesting miscommunication in business where people are really confused about building relationship building and morale building. And they don't realize that accountability is a key piece to build healthy morale, culture, and relationship build with the right team members. People pleasing is very different than relationship building and people pleasing builds, I wouldn't even call it morale, but relationship builds with the wrong people. So you end up empowering bullies and people who are manipulative and dishonest, which degrades your morale with people who really care about the business and want to show up and work and overall will end up degrading your staff and your ability to function and be successful in a business environment. But a lot of people think that upset is the thing to avoid and no one gets more sort of tricky or upset when being challenged than bullies or people who have gotten away with a lot and aren't interested in your business, but are interested in being in power. And so um, they'll play by different rules. And so it takes being able to identify character and be with people in such a way that they can step into a healthy character, which in the end will make them much happier. But it's an art form. It's not something that really people come equipped with. We should teach it in high school. Emotional intelligence, communication, accountability, receiving feedback. But it was interesting this week because I, I definitely want feedback, but the feedback the leader gave me was pretty disheartening. Because it meant that rather than hearing me or seeing me, he was believing sort of a perception of what he'd been told versus reality. <sighs> and so it's an interesting thing, having gone to coaching school, I'm gonna go again, so that's gonna be amazing with all I'll learn, but you learn how to hear people and listen in such a different way. And so people don't realize what they're communicating. So it was ironic to get feedback that I need to work on relationship building because <laughs> some of the people have bad behavior there don't like me as much. Well, and it's a bunch of high schoolers. So of course, if one who talks to everyone and kind of controls the click feels challenged by me, then they're all going to hear that and have a certain perception when they engage with me. So, um, but my boss hasn't done any relationship building with me. And I came in and I offered trust right off the bat because that's what the environment needs when you're coming in with two new assistant store managers and a store manager who's got an out of control environment. You really need people who are going to be honest with you and behave in a way that you have trust that you haven't earned. And I brought that and I shouldn't have probably, which I mean, you create the environment, right? So bring the trust if you want to have trust, but I shouldn't have, I should have just been quiet and sat to the back and not said much and just waited. Um, because people say they want something and they don't, you have to go off of their actions. So this morning we have a manager meeting with just the four of us and I'm just not really interested. And of course, someone's offering to bring Starbucks. It's a huge thing at this place where it's like bribery. Look, it's really nice to bring people Starbucks. Don't get me wrong, but it's a, when, when you're buying things for people, so I've bought snacks there multiple times, but of course no one's noticed, but it's been like $50 a few times just buying stuff for the whole team. You put it on the table. There's no differentiation between who gets and who doesn't. When you buy something specific for someone, like there's a lot of team members buying things for management, 
and then management is doing them favors because it blurs the lines and here's someone's doing that for the meeting and they're just nervous, we're all nervous. I don't wanna go in and do the meeting either. And I don't really feel like there's much I wanna say. I've said a lot and I'm kinda of to the place where it's like, I think I'm done speaking. I told you what I wanted to say and I got upset last week, so I sent my boss probably a text I shouldn't have, but I kind of reached the end then anyway. So really, I'll just kind of say I've said everything I want to say. And if people want to set a tone of accountability or change the culture, that's on somebody else because it keeps coming back on me that I'm doing something that I'm not doing. And um, if they want it, they get to do what they want to do because I can't do any of that. Like, even <laughs> I'm supposed to work these big shipments. And yesterday, a single person showed up again, but I can't take control of the team, so I can't build accountability with the team or loyalty because the store manager keeps doing it, but he doesn't hold anybody accountable. So it was just the two of us, and she's like, you know, Emily, I don't want this to sound the wrong way because I love hanging out with you, but we just hired a bunch of people. Why are we the only people that show up for shipment? And of course, someone's out sick, and there's other factors right now, but it's just like, what do you say? Well there's no accountability here and there's no control of the conversation or environment or no one's focused on business as long as we're all focused on being friends and making everyone feel welcome. And look, that happens automatically when you create accountability and everyone's so young, they don't really understand any of that. So I guess I'm trying to talk myself up to a, a place where I want to go in and do this. So at first I told her, yeah, you can get me a Starbucks. And then she, it was so weird in the text because she's like, I've got your usual saved. And I'm like, what? You bought me Starbucks one time six weeks ago. What do you mean you have it saved? It's a mocha. And what do you mean my usual? We don't do this. So then I texted her and I just said, you know, actually I'm not in the mood for a Starbucks, thank you. Not because I wouldn't like a Starbucks, but because I can go get my own Starbucks and I don't want to create anything. It's kind of loud noise for 6 a.m. Um, any blurred lines, but I don't plan to get anyone feedback this morning either. I've done plenty of that and I've sort of reached my limit. So I'm a bit down about that, but it has caused me to start looking. I just need to look for it to probably out of retail. I've tried big box. I've tried small box. I'd rather go back to big box at this point, not target, but Lowe's was definitely a lot more interesting. This is just it's amateur town. And then people think, well, why is retail failing? Because you have a bunch of babies running it and they don't care about your business. They care about how they look. They care about hanging out with their friends. And then your leadership is also babies and they don't have the skill set to manage even younger babies. It's like having, you know, 12 year olds babysit five year olds. It can work. It's cheaper, but not if you want a successful business. Um, it's just, a lot of people don't know how to lead. It's a bummer. So we're gonna read from chapter seven here, the reality. The Hindu says, if God wished to hide, God would choose man to hide in. That is the last place man would look for God. The trouble with the masses of humanity today is that they're trying to become something that is already right within. We are seeking and searching everywhere outside ourselves for God, attending countless lectures, meetings, groups, readings, innumerable books, reading innumerable books, looking to teachers and personalities and leaders when all the time God is right within. If mankind will let go of the trying and accept that they are, they will soon be perfectly aware of the reality. And that's what I'm getting from this experience. Um, is it was a powerful reminder because I've learned this lesson before. Don't say anything, Emily, even if people say they want you to. Just go in and just do your job and don't don't make any waves. And I made this mistake one time before when I was also hired to be a higher level leader. And you think, okay, I'm coming in. They're telling me they want me to come in and make these changes. And then you come in to make the changes and you're like, you're right. I've assessed the environment. Here are the changes you need to make. And then they go, what do you mean we need to make changes? And then you become the problem or the counterculture. They don't want you to be involved, right? It's like, well, she says we've got problems, but she's the only one saying we've got problems. So she must be the problem. I'm like you told me we had these problems and that you wanted to fix them. And when you're operationally astute, 
with business, I've worked in so many businesses at so many levels, it's not hard to see. Like anyone worth their weight in salt could come in and be like, this is what's going on here. So of course we have this meeting. On the same day we have a district visit today. Um, and I don't wanna do any of it. That's where I'm sitting. And so, but I've learned this lesson before, right? Don't say anything. Cause even Abraham says it, when you say or talk about problems, you become a problem. It's law of attraction too, and I should know better. But I feel like this has been an important preparation and reminder for what's next. So wherever I'm going next, I don't make that mistake again. And you just play nice and smile and nod. And I think this is this reading is a powerful reminder. If God wished to hide, God would choose man to hide in because that's the last place man would look for God. And when mankind will let go of trying and accept that they are, they will soon be perfectly aware of the reality. And not only am I God, right, but so are the people I'm meeting with this morning, so are the people I'm seeing, so are you. And there is a certain element of trying when you're trying to fix anything and not letting it just be what it is. So I think this morning I'm good at embracing awkward. I'm just gonna let it be whatever it is this morning. Reach over here, maybe Neville's got something. Hear, O Israel, hear, O man, made of the very substance of God. That's funny, it's a page it opened to. You and God are one and undivided. Man, the world, and all within it are conditioned states of the unconditioned one, God. You are this one, you are God conditioned as man. All that you believe God to be, you are. But you will never know this to be true until you stop claiming it of another and recognizing this seeming other to be yourself. God and man, spirit and matter, the formless and the formed, the creator and the creation, the cause and the effect, your father and you are one. This one in whom all conditioned states live and move and have their being is your I am, your unconditioned consciousness. Unconditioned consciousness is God, the one and only reality. By unconditioned consciousness is meant a sense of awareness, a sense of knowing that I am a part from knowing who I am. The consciousness of being divorced, the consciousness of being divorced from that which I am conscious of being. So it's that split, knowing that you have awareness and you are something, but you're aware of being that something, which means you're something else as well. I am aware of being man, but I need not be man to be aware of being. Being I became aware of being, before I became aware of being someone, I, unconditioned awareness, was aware of being. And this awareness does not depend on being someone. I am self-existent, unconditioned consciousness. I became aware of being someone, and I shall become aware of being someone other than this, that I am now aware of being. But I am eternally aware of being, whether I am unconditioned formlessness, or I am conditioned form. He nails it, doesn't it? It's one thing to say we're all God, but what he's saying is the fact that I'm aware of being is the piece of me that's God, not the physical. And just that I'm aware of being aware shows that I'm God. Or that is the God piece to me. And whether we're aware of being this form, this Emily, this video, or, you know, this form passes, I will still be me and still be aware of being and that's what makes me eternal and i think that helps make it a little more literal that's from chapter one the oneness of god from freedom for all i'm trying to find another neville book for to read for us because we finished i know my father and i liked freedom for all so and it fit with what i read from the lives and teachings of the far east so anyway wherever you're at today i'm sure you're experiencing something similar this goes on in work everywhere I also got accepted to my master's program for um, executive coaching and co consulting, which is very exciting. It means that I'd be launching my own business, which is probably where this is going and requires a certain amount of strength and insight. And even as a consultant, you're hired to come in and tell people what their problems and help them with it. But I guess I'm learning a certain finesse. I probably wouldn't be able to be direct about it then either, even though that's what they're hiring you to do. But that's okay because I'm learning, I'm being prepared for something, and so are you. Have a blessed day, be well, be safe, stay warm. I'm really excited for this day to be over. I hate to say that, but beautiful things will happen, I know it. Peace be with you.